Traveling to Disney World is about to get easier, somewhat cheaper, and a whole lot less complicated. How is that even possible? Find out everything you need to know about the latest Disney World travel changes here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog and I come bearing good news. Going to Disney World isn't going to be quite the stress fest that it used to be and we're here to tell you why, as well as give you some red hot tips and tricks that'll help your Disney World trip planning go smoothly no matter when you decide to visit. But let me start things off by giving you our free, that's right, free Disney World planning worksheets, which will include a Disney planning timeline, a list of things you need to do before you book, organized spreadsheets, and so many other helpful pages that'll be good for type A and type B personalities alike. Just scan the QR code you see on the screen or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash disneyplans right after this to pick yours up. Okay, first, park passes, my friends, are going away. That's right, those park pass reservations are heading out the door. Soon, you're not gonna have to worry about any extra steps after you purchase your theme park tickets. Starting January 9th, 2024, park pass reservations will not be needed whatsoever for those who have date-based tickets. Now, who are those folks? Well, those are people who buy theme park tickets that are tied to a specific date or a set of dates. They won't need park passes to get into the parks at all. Now, most Disney tickets are date-based tickets. So unless you are in the annual pass holder, cast member, student group, military ticket arena, you're not going to have to book park pass reservations anymore. So that's going to be the majority of y'all. But if you are a pass holder, cast member, you're a student group, you're in a sport and convention ticket kind of block or whatever, then you will still need to make park pass reservations. Just look at your tickets and see if there's dates on there. If there are dates connected with your tickets, then you will not have to make park pass reservations. If you can use your tickets any day, then you will need to make park pass reservations. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, annual pass holders, you do have more relaxed rules when it comes to park passes since you can enter into any of the parks after 2 p.m. and not have to worry about making a reservation at all, unless you're going to Magic Kingdom on a weekend. Then reservations are still required even after 2 p.m. There will be a few good-to-go days for pass holders in the future, which will mean no reservations will be required at any park any time of the day. So pass holders will need to keep an eye on the park pass reservation calendar to see when those freebie days are going to be available. Otherwise, if you're an out-of-town guest just looking to spend vacation in the East Coast Disney parks, you'll soon only have to worry about purchasing the tickets and show up when you want. That being said, you still need to make park pass reservations for the remainder of this year if you're going to Disney World for the end of 2023. And believe me, with the holiday season fast approaching, you're going to want to book those reservations sooner rather than later. But if you've got a 2024 visit, you're about to experience a whole lot more visitation freedom. And since park pass reservations are going away, it only makes sense for park hopping rules to follow suit, right? We've been talking about this for such a long time and it's finally official. Disney announced that beginning January 9th, 2024, all day park hopping is finally coming back. For the past few years, park hopping has been restricted thanks to the park pass reservation system. Currently, you must visit the park you first made reservations for and then you aren't able to jump to a different park until after 2 p.m. However, those rules are about to be dropped. Once January January 9th rolls around, anyone who has a park ticket with a park hopper or an annual pass can visit another theme park at any time of day during park hours, meaning you could start your day riding Rise of the Resistance in Hollywood Studios, then immediately jump on a Skyliner and head over to Epcot for breakfast if you wanted to. It's freedom, y'all. We are finally getting this freedom back. Disney also noted that on days when theme park reservations are required for annual pass holders and certain non-dated tickets, pass holders and guests will still be able to take advantage of the updates to park hopper access after visiting their first park. Meaning, if an annual pass holder made a park pass reservation for Magic Kingdom and entered that park at 9 a.m., they can leave at 9.01 and go to a different park anytime after that. They just have to make sure they scan into the park they made the reservation for first. Otherwise, the world is going to be there and your oyster. Time to talk flights. So flight layovers are obnoxious. One minute you're sailing through the clouds on your way to Disney World and the next you've got to make a three plus hour pit stop at a random airport to get on a second flight. Is there a fast forward button anywhere that I can press? So good thing there are more direct flights being added to the Orlando International Airport all the time. This is something we keep an eye on on the blog for you, but also for us, because a lot of us live elsewhere in the country, and so we're definitely flying to Disney World. On the DFB website, we've got updates on the most recent nonstop Orlando flights that we can find across the states. Some of our most recent discoveries have included Breeze flights from Plattsburgh, New York, starting November 28th, with introductory one-way prices around 59 bucks. Delta flights from Westchester County, New York, starting November 
September 10th, with a total flight time just around two and a half hours. Breeze flights from Portland, Maine, which already started this September. Breeze flights from New Orleans that started in late September. And yet again, more nonstop breeze flights from Providence, Rhode Island, because Breeze has been popping up everywhere like daisies lately. But it's not just Breeze we're seeing nonstop flights for. Several other budget airlines are starting to add them to their itineraries too. So if you want to stay in the know, check out our DFB website for the latest Orlando International Airport news. Also, I highly recommend downloading a flight price tracker app to help you keep an eye on price trends for airlines near you. Okay, let's talk Genie Plus updates because they're coming again. We've seen Disney Genie Plus change and we've seen it change a lot, but it's about to change again in 2024. We're just not sure about the extent of these changes yet. What we do know is that Disney has acknowledged that several guests missed the days of Fast Pass Plus when they could book up to three Fast Passes ahead of their trip for each park day. And while the free part of the service isn't coming back anytime soon, Disney is currently figuring out how guests might be able to make Lightning Lane selections before their vacations kick off, just like back in the good old days. While the details surrounding these changes are still pretty much up in the air, we do know Disney's planning on launching Lightning Lane updates sometime in 2024. Whatever these updates end up looking like, Disney has assured guests that their ultimate goal with these future changes is to simplify the Genie Plus service altogether and make it to where less planning has to happen on the day of your visit so you can spend more time just enjoying the parks. Seems like the opposite of what they tried to do before, but mm, whatever. Now, as we're waiting to hear more news about these Genie Plus updates, make sure you're up to date on the most recent Lightning Lane changes that we've already seen happen in the last few months. Back in June, Disney switched their Genie Plus pricing from a date-based system to a date and park-based system. All right, AJ, that's a lot of words. Please explain. <laughs> Basically, the amount you pay for Genie Plus each day all depends on when you visit and which park you go to. For example, if you're heading to Disney's Animal Kingdom, it'll probably be cheaper to use Genie Plus there than it would be in Magic Kingdom, where there's more of a lightning lane demand. There's also an option to buy Genie Plus to use across multiple parks if you're planning on using a park hopper that day. We got tons of Disney Disney Genie hacks to share with you if you're planning on using this service soon. So be sure to check out our past DFP videos that center around all things Lightning Lane. Now, this TSA pre-check travel change was actually made back in 2022, but you can benefit from it right now for your future flights. But first, let's talk about what TSA pre-check actually is. With the purchase of TSA pre-check, and TSA, by the way, is Transportation Security Administration, right? That's the security you have to go through at the airport. You can make your wait for airline security much, much faster and more efficient. Instead of having to wait in forever long lines to take off your shoes and get all the technology out of your carry-on onto those conveyor belt bins and remove your jackets and belts and jewelry, you know, the basic airport procedures, TSA PreCheck allows you to skip all those extra steps and breeze on through security in a much shorter line, especially in the Orlando airport. It's unbelievable how much time you can save as a TSA PreCheck member. So previously, this service cost $85 per passenger. Now it costs $78. And best of all, this price is going to cover you for the next five years of TSA PreCheck. Then when it's time to renew, you'll only have to pay 70 bucks for another five years. If you think this sounds like a real steal of a deal that you want to get a jump on, all you have to do is go online to the TSA website and apply for pre-approval. You'll then book an interview where you'll need to provide a valid photo ID and proof of citizenship. Once you're approved, you'll be given a known traveler number that you can input when booking your flights. This is going to give you access to a special pre-check lane at airport security. Orlando International Airport also has an area where you can apply for TSA PreCheck right there in the airport. That means you can enroll in TSA PreCheck at the airport without reserving an appointment time, and the process to enroll should take five minutes or less. To enroll, find the IDEMIA TSA PreCheck Enrollment Ambassadors at the security screening area in the Orlando International Airport. They're located in front of the security checkpoint for gates 1 to 59 on the South Walk side. Enrollment hours take place Monday to Friday between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. It does take three to five days to be approved, so passengers won't be able to immediately access that TSA pre-check line during their Orlando trip if they're applying for it in person, unless they're there for a week or two. So if you're wanting to use TSA pre-check for your upcoming Disney vacation, it's best to apply for it online instead. Time to talk My Disney Experience changes. So the My Disney Experience app was originally designed to make your Disney World trips easier to keep track of. But with all the recent changes Disney's been making to this free app, future trips just keep getting easier to manage. So let's talk about the three changes we've seen pop up on MDE recently. First up, we've got another Genie Plus change here because of course we do. In case you're still a little hazy on what your Genie Plus purchases will actually get you, here's a little truth bullet for you. 
Not all rides are included in the Genie Plus service, either because they don't have a Lightning Lane at all, or because they're only available via individual Lightning Lane purchase, which means you'll pay per person per ride to skip over the lines of Disney's most popular rides. So how do you know what rides are part of Genie Plus and which ones aren't? Well, it's all on the website, of course, but thanks to the new My Disney Experience app change, there's now a toggle option at the top of the tip board section of the app that can turn on or off the Genie Plus rides. So if you leave it off, you'll be able to see all rides within that park on the tip board, the ones that use Genie Plus and also the ones that use individual lightning lanes or neither of those. But if you toggle that switch on, it'll limit the list only to those rides that are included in the basic Genie Plus service. That can make your life just a little bit easier as you're deciding what Genie Plus return time to select next. All right, time for the next change, the mobile order feature change. Let's say you want to mobile order your next quick service meal, but you want to see these different menu items before you commit, and you want to check out the dining room setup as well. That's where this new My Disney Experience feature comes into play. Restaurants with mobile order capabilities now feature photo galleries where you can see pictures of the restaurant and food. To find these photos, look for the little circle with an image and blue ring around it next to the name of the restaurant when placing your mobile order. Works a lot like an Instagram story. You'll tap on the circle and pictures of the restaurant will pop up for your viewing pleasure. Finally, and probably the most critical change of them all, we've got the dining reservation change. I love this. Previously, when you were trying to make a dining reservation on the My Disney Experience app, the app would only show you a few available reservation times depending on what you searched for. But now, when you check dining availability for a specific restaurant, you can actually opt to see any and all reservations for the whole day. You can also search by times, morning before 12 p.m., afternoon 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., or evening after 4 p.m. And when you search for reservations during these specific time frames, you'll still be able to see every available time frame in one go. No more messing around. This looks a lot like the open table construct, and it's so much better. By the way, you know how else you can make dining around Disney World 10 times easier for your next trip? By downloading the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. It's available on dfbstore.com right now. It's a three-part guide that includes reviews and pictures and details about every restaurant around the Disney bubble, along with all of our best tips and strategies that we've gathered across our decades of Disney World trips. We got a special discount code for all of you DFB viewers. Use code YouTube before you check out to save money on your purchase. And thanks in advance for supporting the channel. Okay, back to the Orlando International Airport. The MCO Reserve Service can often be confused with TSA PreCheck since they both help you bypass the main security lines at MCO. But I assure you, they are both useful but also very different. For starters, MCO Reserve is completely free to use. Music to my ears. All you've gotta do is head to reserve.clearme.com and set up your arrival time to use this shorter complimentary line. The second difference, while TSA PreCheck is available 24 seven, MCO Reserve is only open between 6.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. So if you have a flight earlier or later than those times, you might miss your window of opportunity to use this. Third, MCO Reserve is definitely an Orlando International only thing. While every airport is different, many airports will have a TSA pre-check line for you to use, but not an MCO reserve line. Finally, because the MCO reserve is not a TSA pre-check, you're still gonna have to take off your shoes and get tech out of your carry-on bags and remove jewelry, et cetera, et cetera, just like you would in a normal standby line. All in all, MCO reserve is a solid line bypassing alternative for those who don't have TSA pre-check, but are planning to fly out of the Orlando International Airport at the end of of their Disney World vacation. Definitely something to check out. Several airlines are slowly but surely starting to integrate free Wi-Fi services onto their planes. So, so useful. Now take JetBlue for instance. JetBlue was actually the Wi-Fi trendsetter here since they've offered free connectivity through their FlyFi service since 2013. But in 2023, Delta Airlines started to follow suit and began offering free Wi-Fi for all its customers too. You just have to make sure you're a member of their free SkyMiles loyalty program first. Otherwise, it'll be $10 to use. So might as well join the membership for the free Wi-Fi alone. There are some overseas airlines that also offer free Wi-Fi services like Singapore Air Airlines, Norwegian Airlines, and Qatar Airways too. But we'll be on the lookout to see if any more domestic flights decide to join the free Wi-Fi Express at a later time. Getting a passport can be a rather tedious procedure, especially if you're trying to apply for one right before a Disney cruise or Adventures by Disney excursion, but your hometown might be able to help out with that. 
A few months back, the U.S. Department of State announced it'll be holding special passport acceptance fairs. Now, I'm not talking about fairs as in money. I'm talking fairs as in events in your hometown that'll help you and your family apply for passports without all the extra stress. According to the U.S. Department of State website, some passport acceptance facilities like post offices and government offices and libraries will be hosting these fairs across the U.S. Word of warning, though, these fairs are generally for passport applications. The government website indicates that most of these fairs will be better suited for first-time customers, so those who are eligible to renew a passport should still plan to renew them by mail. Wondering if one of these passport fairs is going to be happening near you? You can visit the Department of State website and check their calendar to see for yourself. New events are being added weekly, so even if you don't see an event that works for you right away, be sure to check back on the website for more updates. Some of these events require appointments and others are available as a walk-in. But no matter what the case may be, the point of these fairs is to present another opportunity for you to get help with your passport application process immediately. Just keep in mind that these fairs don't mean you're going to have your passports expedited to you automatically. It might still take a while for you to receive your passport, so the earlier you can apply for one before your trip, the better off you'll be. So for some of you, this might be the best Disney World change that'll be happening next year. The Disney Dining Plan will be returning on January 9th, 2024, the same day the Park Pass reservations will be disappearing for most guests. For those of you out there thinking, um, why should I care about this? Especially since the DDP has been missing from Disney World since 2020, so a lot of you have never even heard of it. This returning service is essentially a way for Disney World guests who book a vacation through the Disney website to prepay for all their dining costs at once, instead of worrying about paying for each of their meals out of pocket once they arrive. It's kind of like getting cafeteria dining credits in college, like that kind of thing. And here's the really good news about this service. You can start adding the Disney dining plan to your future trips today. Not every person's gonna benefit from adding a DDP to their vacation package, but the big selling point of this service is to create a more all-inclusive dining experience around the parks and resorts. Most all of the Disney World restaurants, as well as the Epcot Festival booths, will be Disney dining plan participants. But if you want a closer look into which restaurants specifically you can use your Disney dining plan credits for, We've got a full list on the DFB website now, which I'll link for you down in the description. It might not be the free Disney's Magical Express shuttle service we once had, but these airport transportation improvements are still much appreciated. Before we get into that, let's do a super speedy walk down memory lane. At the beginning of 2022, the complimentary Disney's Magical Express that'd take you from the Orlando International Airport to your Disney Resort and back again, retired for good. In its place, two premium shuttle services rolled onto the scene. The first was the Mirrors Connect, shortly followed by Sunshine Flyer. There weren't a whole lot of differences between the two services other than theming and slight price changes, but in July of this year, the two shuttle services merged into one mega service, transforming into the Mirrors Connect driven by Sunshine buses. While this new shuttle service is essentially the same as before with just a longer name, it did add some improved features like guaranteed 24-7 service, new express options, and even private trip capabilities too. You can reserve your seat on a Mirrors shuttle after you purchase your flight tickets by heading to Mirrors Connect.com. Despite traveling to Disney World getting a little bit easier, there's still a lot of planning involved to successfully pull off those trips to the most magical place on Earth. So make sure to keep tuning back in with us as we continue to update you on the latest Disney changes and be sure to download our Disney World planning worksheets over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash DisneyPlans. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.